Hopefully this is recording. Um, let me check. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay. So, I could not find uh, a person that wanted <laughs> one nail um, for this video, so I am doing it on the trainer hand. Hopefully that's okay. We are going to do some tip applications today, um, full well specifically in this video. So, everybody has washed their hands, all that fun stuff. We've got some brush on nail glue here, um, a couple of different size tips. <coughs> Ova, our training lady, and our 180-100 um, grit uh, nail file, because we're going to assume this is a natural nail. So, um, first things first, check and see how her cuticle situation is doing. We're good on this one, so we're just going to file her nails down um, just to get everything ready for the tip. <coughs> Well, this was somebody's natural nail. Um, I would cut them down with uh, nail clippers in the first place. Our trainer hands are meant to help us build um, strength and such from filing, so <laughs> none of those things seem to work well <laughs> on bringing down any of that. So. We're also filing back and forth because it's a artificial nail. Um, if this was somebody's real nail, trying to bring in the length, we're going to file in from one side on both sides. Um, just so you're not creating any split lines or gaps in their fingernail. Makes your job harder in the long run to uh, have to split have to fix splits and chips and stuff in their natural nail bed. It's also incredibly unhealthy um, for them to clean themselves. So I'm taking her down to a length that she is comfortable with. I'm just checking over the work with uh, bring some dusting down stuff, make it, everything's even. Gonna soften her corners only because she's got a tip going on top of this. Um, and you wanna make sure that none of this underneath here is still there. <clears throat> now, we're assuming this is the natural nail bed. When we put on tips and everything, we're going to have to file out the natural line um, that is created by the tips. <laughs> so I tend not to f double file. I don't want to mess with their nail plate too bad. So I'm only going to find a tip that I like um, its placement on. Now it's still a little long. Readjust her corners, balancing and stuff. I personally would not use these particular nail tips on my client because they are very, very, very curved. This arch here is dramatic. Um, as you can see, theirs is not nearly as dramatic. So whether the nail bed fits or not, um, you're going to have to make some adjustments because 
They are simply two different types of nails. So, let's see if a smaller nail helps. <clears throat> I'm going to use this one, just file down the sides and such. So, because it's hanging off a little bit, I'm just going to bring down the sides of this one in particular. The nails are very straight on the trainer hands, <coughs> and so our tips shall be as well. Let's make sure you don't have any of the overhang and such on your nail. Uh, you don't have to worry too much about scratching this up because you're about to file the death out of it anyhow. So, just want to make sure that this is sitting well on our fingernail. Okay. So, now we're going to take, you know approximately how far, because this is a full nail, full well nail, you approximately know how far this is going to go up on her nail bed. Um, so that's about the area that you want to file till, uh, just to keep her natural nail bed, again, as natural as possible, I guess, as healthy as possible. So we're just going to put some scour lines <coughs> across where the tip is going to sit. Excess and we'll take our nail tip, readjust in case for some reason she's grown in the last 30 seconds. And we are going to brush the end of it with brush on nail glue. Just like so. I'd rather file off too much nail glue than not have enough. So my teacher has taught us this rock and mole method, which as I understand it means that you're starting at the front of the nail and tipping this way. Um, is a good way to avoid air bubbles and such in your nails. So let's see. You're going to hold that for 10 seconds. Flame pressure. I'm an old ver pressure. Ver, ver. <laughs> Just because I want to make sure it's on there. If this isn't on here, I might as well not do anything else I'm about to do. So, on there pretty well. A little wide, we're going to file that in. <clears throat> Just make sure there's no air bubbles and stuff and no excess over the top. One moment, get some clippers, we'll continue with this. Now that we know how long we're going to put on our nail tip application, just a little bit extra, so we're going to go just a tad longer than her natural nail, just to make sure that we have a line there. <coughs> so we cut that down, we're going to go into the sides immediately and just bring this line here flush on both sides. You can always bring a nail tip in that is too big. You cannot make a nail tip that is too small work on your nail bed. It's too small. You're going to create gaps. <coughs> when you create gaps, you're going to create breaks right along your natural nail bed, which is pretty much the worst thing in the world. <laughs> Feels terrible. So. Here. Push the edge a little bit. I'm going to want to make sure <coughs> this file line here now, that's what we're going to want to get rid of. So we're going to go in and file this in a downward motion. 
You can also use your sanding band at this particular point, but again, it's next to the natural line, so it's worth it doing this by hand. Um, you'll be able to tell as soon as the line is flush because this little white line almost disappears um, when that happens. So just keep sanding until you're there. Also, this is where you're going to buff out the artificial nail. I do the 180 on this side because um, this is against the artificial tip. Right? When you go closer up to the natural nail line, switch over. Just because it's better for their natural nail, you don't need to be as abrasive if you are about to apply um, materials over top of your extension, so gel acrylic, whatever you're doing. This one, later on, is going to be a dip acrylic application because it's my next assignment. <laughs> and so, we want to get this nice and pretty. Pretty much what we want the end result of this particular nail to look like because the acrylic itself. Um, ooh, that brings up my thing. What's on my nails? This is my second attempt at dip acrylic. Um, <laughs> the first time I did it, I did it with a monomer, uh, which is not the correct way. The second one was with a resin. Um, my teacher was right on this fact because these are gorgeous. Yes, yes, honey. So this is my first official attempt on uh, dip acrylic. Thank you very much, and that is what will be on this one next time. It is with a holographic sparkle by OPI and a purple stamp. Bundle Monster BMXL 2220. 20, so, that's that one there. <laughs> so, back to her nails at hand. Just gonna make sure that you have the shape that you wanted. Um, keep in mind that the line um, needs to come in a little because there's a curvature to the nail. So make sure that at some point in time you continue on that curve and just make sure that it's flushed down. You can do that by filing your nail lengthwise <coughs> just to feel that flush line here. I'm going to adjust a little bit on the top here for the next application. It's good here. And for the purpose of this particular demonstration, I'm just going to wipe the nail off so you can see the full tip application that is now ready for acrylic. Or will be in just a moment. <laughs> there you go. Now it is nice and dried out.